So if you are currently studying GCSE Maths and you're thinking of taking A-Level Maths in September, then this video is for you. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now for today's video, we are going to be discussing everything you need to know if you're thinking of taking A-Level Maths in September. Now I have done a video like this before, but I have planned this video out and I've got some notes here on my iPad and I'm gonna be taking you through everything you need to know. So the first thing you need is a GCSE in maths. Now everybody gets one and if you don't get one, you have to continue it at college. Hopefully if you're thinking of doing A-level maths, you are around about a grade six slash grade seven because most colleges require a six and a seven to do maths. If you've got higher than that, then that's fantastic and you could maybe think about taking a level further maths if you want to but grade six and grade seven around about that for taking a level maths now a level maths works a little bit differently to gcse maths and for the college that i go to anyway you have to have a lot of folders i don't know how other colleges do it i'm gonna guess they use folders and use lots and lots of notepads oh now, A-level maths works a little bit differently to GCSE maths and you, or I don't anyway, I don't know how other colleges do, but you don't have a maths book. You have to get notepads yourself. I use lined paper, uh, people use square paper, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But you will need a lot of notepads and you will also need a lot of folders. On my bookshelf here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six folders for my A-level maths and I've also got one folder at the minute that I'm doing further maths, so I've got one folder for that as well. I have been through tons of notepads, so make sure for any A-level subject, not even just maths, but make sure that you are prepared and you've got a lot of those. You will also need a calculator. Now, I don't know what calculator your college will require and when you go on an open day or if you've been on, on an open day, they probably have required for you to get one. But this is the calculator that most colleges require. It's the Casio Class Whiz calculator and it lets you do basically everything that you need for A-level. You can integrate, there's a stats mode on it, there's distribution mode, everything that you need for A-level is on this calculator. I will leave a link to the calculator on Amazon down below. I think it's about 18 pound, I really can't remember. But I have this calculator and I also have another calculator as well. I think it's downstairs, so just bear with me one second. I found it. I'm here, don't worry. Hello, here's my other calculator. So like I said, I have the class with cal class with, no, I have the class whiz calculator, but I also have this calculator that you might have seen or you might not have seen. I'm out of breath because I just ran downstairs. So this is the graphical calculator. It's the Casio FXCG50 graphical calculator. And I use this calculator more than this one, but they are both great for A-level. Now, the difference between this calculator and this one is that this one allows you to draw graphs. This is the graphical calculator. So you basically can draw any graph. So if you're stuck in an exam and it's asking you to draw a graph, you can put it in the calculator. X squared looks like that. There we go. This one was more expensive than this one, but they sell this on Amazon. It's actually more expensive on Amazon. If you go through the Pearson website, which I will leave a link in the description, you get it a lot cheaper. I mean, cheap, I think it was about 60 pounds or 80 pounds, something like that. But it's my favorite calculator. Yes, I just did say I have a favorite calculator. So yes, just take into consideration the calculator that you need, pens, pencils, things like that, and notepads and folders. Now, the next big thing that people think about when they're taking A-level maths is the jump between GCSE and A-level. You've just got to, to just go for it. So you will only know how big the jump is once you've started your A-level maths. If you're organized and you are prepared and you're ready, then the jump between GCSE and A-level will not be that big. If you think you need to refresh your maths knowledge, then I've got you, don't worry. You can buy my book, which is on my website. I need help with maths.com. You can go to our shop and you can 
you can buy my book. It's actually, I'm gonna say this obviously, but it's, it's a very good book. It's the GCSE to A Level Math Transition Guide. There's about 72 practice questions in there and there's examples and there's notes and the answers to the practice questions are included. Make sure you go and check it out if you want to. When you start your A Level, you will be introduced slowly. You're not going to be given topics that you've never seen before. I did the Edexcel course for my A Level and we started with things like index laws, thirds, expanding brackets, factorising, things that you've seen at GCSE before. When we got onto quadratics, which I think is about chapter two in the pure section of A-level maths, you start introducing small details that are new, but the whole topic you have seen before. So it's not a huge jump, you're not thrown into something completely new from your first lesson. But what you will get from your first lesson, I presume, is homework. Make sure, I know it's really easy to say, but it's harder to do, make sure you do your homework as soon as you possibly can, because that way you won't get caught up in all the homework and you'll just get it done and you'll have more free time to think about other things. So once you've started your A-level, you will notice that you get taught slightly differently. The A-level course is usually two years. Now, I actually did mine in one year because I was doing further maths, so that's how my college decided to do it but the majority of colleges do A-level maths over two years. And you are taught half of your A-level in the first year, which they call AS level maths. Don't know whether some colleges still do this, but you can take an AS in maths at the end of the first year. Don't quote me on that because I think they've stopped that now. I'm not too sure. And in your second year, you will then do the second half of your A-level maths and you will take the A-level exam at the end of your two years. Now, for there to be an exam, you have to get taught a lot of maths. At A level, the maths that you learn is split up into three topics. There is pure maths, there is mechanics, and there is statistics. Each of those maths are actually very different. In pure maths, you learn things like algebra, trigonometry, and then a whole new branch of mathematics called calculus. Calculus is where you find area under curves, and you can find the exact gradient of a curve at any point. So it's actually quite useful and quite interesting. Mechanics is the applied side of maths along with statistics. And in mechanics, you learn things about forces, motion, modeling in real life situations, acceleration, deceleration, loads of things like that. Particles under motion is the majority of mechanics. And if you are good at physics, and you're interested in physics, then mechanics you will find interesting as well. And then statistics also comes under the applied side of maths, and statistics is all about data. It's about data collection, it's about distributions, There's something called hypothesis testing is something brand new that you only see at A-level, and about measures of spread and location and averages, things like that. So statistics is all about data. You will learn pure stats and mechanics in your first year and your second year, and depending on how your college is to teach it. They might mix it through, so you might do a little bit of pure, a little bit of mechanics, a little bit of stats, or you might do all of the pure, all of the mechanics, all of the stats, or they might mix it together. Then at the end of your two years, you are tested by three exams. The exams are usually taken in May and June. Mom! What the heck? Mom, what are you playing? Can you just turn it down? Problem resolved. It's okay. Back to talking about the exams. You are examined through three exams and the exams are usually taken during May and June. I can only speak for the Edexcel course because that's the course that I did. There are three papers. Paper one is pure maths and it's two hours long. Paper two is pure maths and again, it's two hours long. Paper three, half of it is mechanics and half of it is statistics. And that paper is also, surprise, surprise, two hours long. I know AQA exam board do it a little bit differently. I think their paper one is pure and mechanics. I'm not too sure. You can have a look on the websites. I'll leave them linked in the description down below. For the majority of the courses, there are three exams. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some of the questions that you asked on my maths Instagram because I left one of those question boxes on my story to ask if anybody has any questions about A-level maths and I got a few questions, so I'm gonna answer them for you now. Um, I've got to find it first though, so give me one minute. 
Got them, right. The first question says, do you believe that if someone is passionate about maths, they will do well at A-level maths? Short answer, yes. I didn't used to like maths. I wasn't the best at maths, as you may know or you may not know. And then I started practicing math and I got so much better at it. GCSE, I got a nine. A-level, I got an A. And I'm now studying further maths, so yes. If you're passionate about maths and you want to do well, absolutely take A-level maths. The next question is, is A-level further maths that much different to A-level maths? Um, yes, it is. You learn loads of different things that you don't learn in A-level maths. You learn about complex numbers in further maths, which is things how to deal with the square root of minus one. Um, and that's a whole different branch of mathematics. So yes, it is different. And you do have to be very good at maths to do further maths. But if you are passionate, like the last question said, then you can still do further maths and it is very interesting. The thing with further maths as well is you get to choose what modules you want to take. I'm not the best at mechanics, I can do it, but I much prefer pure maths. I've taken a mo uh, two modules, no, hang on a minute. I've taken one module on pure maths and another module on decision maths, which again is a new branch of mathematics all about algorithms is decision maths. So. Yes, it is different to A-level maths, but you can you can learn what you want to learn, if that makes sense. Next question, how many hours outside of class do you believe is the right amount to study for maths? Um, this is totally up to you, really. You will get homework during A-level maths. You will get a lot more homework than GCSE maths, but just make sure that you do it as soon as possible. I would say around five hours a week is the minimum that you need to be doing. And that's what my college says as well. I do a lot more than that just because I want to do well. And if you want to do well, you will do as many hours as you need to do until you have mastered a topic. Next question says, how independent is A-level maths? It is independent. It's more independent than GCSE maths, but you have always got teachers to go and ask. You've got people in your class that you can ask as well. And teachers will always be available, or I should hope so anyway, always be available for you to go and speak to. So yes, the homework is very independent, but if you're struggling, then you can always ask someone. Next question says, what are your top tips when you are in the maths exam and are starting to struggle? Put your pen down, take a breath, read the question again and have another go. And if you still can't do the question, move on to the next one and come back to it at the end. Next question says, what do you believe is the difference in worth? No. What do you believe is the difference in work ethic between getting a C and an A star? Personally, I just think it's mindset. If you believe you can get an A star and if you work really, really hard to get an A star, you can get it. I was on a grade four in year nine. And by the start of year 11, I was on a grade nine. So we'd gone from a grade four in year nine all the way to a grade nine, just by doing loads of maths exam questions, revising, all of that got me to a grade nine. And it's actually got me to where I am today, studying further maths. If you're on a grade C, you might be working really, really hard, but maths just doesn't come naturally to you, and that's fine. The difference between getting a C and an A star is just how much maths you have to do. You can revise, but make sure you are putting that into exam style questions and doing those questions to the best of your ability like you are in an exam and then mark them using the mark scheme to see where you've missed marks and what the mark schemes are looking for. The next question says, could you do a transition from GCSE maths to A-level maths post slash video? I can in the future, but for now, like I said, have a look at my GCSE to A-level transition guide, which is on my website, I need help with maths.com. I'll leave a link in the description. The next question says, when should you start revising for the real exam and what is the best method? Um, you should really be revising throughout the whole of your A-level because if you leave it towards the end, you don't want to be cramming. The latest I would leave it is about March because then you've got March, April, May, and then your exam is either in May or June. I mean, even February is quite late to start revising. But if you do it little and often, then by the time you get to your exam, you have hopefully revised everything and not had to cram it in all at the end. And the best method for revision is whatever works for you. I think everybody should do practice papers and exam questions because that's how you're gonna get tested in the real exam. But as long as the revision method works for you, then that's fine. To find one that works for you, just try all of them and see which gets your grade the highest. And the last question says, what is the difference between core and A-level? 
Core maths is what they used to call it, I think. They used to have core one, core two, core three. That was the old style of A-level maths. But A-level maths now is all exam based. So it's pure statistics and mechanics. Hopefully this video was useful. If it was, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Make sure you go over to my Instagram. I need help with maths if you need help with maths. And you can follow me on Instagram as well. I'll leave it. I don't know which side it comes up, but it'll be on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.